So years ago when I was younger, I needed, you know, out of work for a while, needed the money, took a part-time job working in a coal mine. I mean, it was rough. It was, you know, it, it's nothing to, you know, look lightly on. I got hurt like almost every day, um, mostly pulled muscles. They were minor injuries. Hey kids, Adam here. Before we start today's video, I just want to say thank you for everyone. Uh, we hit one of the main goals for this year. I hit a thousand subscribers last week sometime. Actually hit it a couple times. Uh, I still know who you are. No, I don't. But uh, uh, happy to say I've hit a thousand subscribers. That was one of my big goals for this year. And uh, I, I did it. I want to thank everyone for watching, subscribing, listening to my jokes. If you watch just for the jokes, if you watch just for the music, dealing with my jokes. Uh, if you watch just for bass, dealing with the music stuff and everything else going on. I uh, just want to thank each and every one of you. Without the thousand and seven of you after as the 26th, uh, Merry Christmas, by the way, uh, happy holidays. If it weren't for the thousand and seven of you who have subscribed, I wouldn't have this channel. I wouldn't keep doing this. I wouldn't keep Inter, you know, being interested and keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, so I do want to say thank you. And uh, speaking of, you know, goals and things, this video is going to be the third on my motivation uh, video. And I'll put a card uh, link up to here for that video. Uh, I had three goals that I really wanted to do, and I did two of those videos. Today is the third one. We'll see if I get to one of my stretch goals, which was a bass riff thing. I don't know. Um, we'll see how the week goes here. It may end up being recorded before the end of the year, but not released until after the first, or it'll be shortly after the first. That's why the crowd stretch goals. We try to achieve them, uh, knowing that uh, we really want to get our main goals in. So this video is going to be all about mixing like heavier drums. So most of the stuff I've done on my channel has been my band or my previous bands or things like that. They've been like funk rock, some maybe straight ahead rock, but nothing really what I would consider heavy rock or even into the heavy metal genre. I used to do a lot of that. I used to play a lot of it, never mixed any of it uh, in, in a real band situation or anything. Um, but I decided, you know what? Uh, a lot of you are doing easy drummer or process drums, program drums, uh, and don't really understand how to mix those into a mix. So I decided I'd do this video to kind of show you. I'm going to get in depth on every channel and every send that I'm using. I've done some of this in other videos, and I'll put a playlist to any of my drum mixing stuff up here. Uh, but for the most part, this is going to be specifically for easy drummer. Uh, let's head over to Reaper and we'll take a look. All right, here I am, Reaper. This song is a parody of a very well-known song. I do want to play a good chunk of the song for you. Um, I'll just start when the vocals come in and we'll get uh, pretty much to the end. Here's what it sounds like. So there it is. Let the goalies kick the ball. Uh, there was a rule in the indoor soccer world that changed uh, a few seasons ago, and I put this together as a parody. Uh, if you're interested in any of that, let me know. Otherwise, I won't even get into that on the channel here. Uh, what this is, this is a very simple project with some easy drummer drums, as you see here, some uh, bass some guitar and singing. Now, the guitar is courtesy of my good friend Mike at Let's Talk About Reaper, and the vocals were Mike recording uh, his friend Nate's. Nate, I really appreciate it. So if I go into Easy Drummer here, you'll notice I am using this standard modern basic kit. This is the first kit that comes up when you open Easy Drummer, all the standard drums, all the standard cymbals. And then what I did is I took the song and I just mapped out the drum part. The song is pretty well lined up. Uh, in, in time. Imagine that these days. And uh, I just went through and I kind of just wrote out the drum part by hand. Uh, so that is the drums. That's the only, that's the pattern effect. Let me just play the drums uh, in this part in the chorus here. So those drums were after I processed them. 
Uh, let me see here if I turn off, if I mute all my sends and I take all of these tracks except for the Easy Drummer track because we actually want that on there and I turn off all the effects. This should be just what's coming straight out of Easy Drummer. You can tell there's it's very, very, very different. These are pretty heavily processed. So uh, on the main, you know what? Let me keep all these sends muted for now. So for drum bus, I want to do very, very, very simple EQ moves because I don't want to affect the whole drums as a, as a whole without really you know ruining the sound. So uh, I have a... Uh, high band at 260, just 2 dB, and I have a high shelf over here at a little over 5K, and that's also 2 dB. Um, then I'm using SS on native bus compressor, kind of a standard setting. I like this attack anywhere from one to 10, and I like the release either on point one or auto, depending on the kind of song. I thought it worked better on auto here. Uh, I'm getting the threshold and makeup gain to be about three to four dB, and then, um, adjust the makeup gain for volume matching, and then ratio at four to one. Um, and then I want some kind of saturation. I have a number of saturation plugins. Uh, you'll see in this video, there will be a couple of them. Uh, I was using Waves Kramer tape. Uh, you'll see in my video, if I put a card here to wait why I left Waves, what I was doing to replace that. There were a couple that I was using from um, Hornet plugins. There were, uh, there's JS Saturation built into Reaper. Uh, there are a couple others that you'll see in this video. There's some from Analog Obsessions. Uh, this Neural EQ by Tone Empire was a free plugin that was featured on somebody's channel, and I, I it might have been Brandon from um, the, the Free Plugin Friday channel. It might not have been. Uh, if it isn't and I didn't get your name or something wrong, I'm sorry. This is a free plugin. Uh, I just shot a, you know, drum kit 02. There's a couple of presets for drums. I chose the 02 one and I adjusted just slightly for a little bit of saturation. So I'll do a before and after on just the drum bus itself. All the individual drum processing is off. This is kind of where I start on drums sometimes. Uh, a lot of times I'll start with kick, but for this song I started with this. So effects off and on, I'll put something on the screen to let you know which is which. It brightens it up a little, it tightens it up a little, and it gives it just a little bit of uh, like depth and width uh, without using any like stereo width things. Let's do each individual drum now. I'm gonna start with the kick. Uh, on the kick, I used a Pultec type EQ for the uh, like Pultec trick. Uh, what this is is the boost and attenuation at the same number anywhere from two to six, depending on the song. This, I thought it needed a little bit more. This is the Toucan uh, EQT1A uh, Pultec plugin. It is free if you don't know how to use the Toucan plugins. Take a look at this link up above. It gives that extra thump, just extra definition. Um, I like the way the Pultec works. I use it on almost every kick in every song. Uh, next is gonna be the SSL native channel strip. Uh, now this was the original version, the or the original version I purchased, the version six. The new version is two. I don't know how that works. Let's start over here with the uh, the high filter, which is at right over eight k. I'm doing almost uh, ninety b of gain. Uh, this is a Chris Lord algae trick where he just takes it and he cranks it all the way up. I thought it was a little too much all the way up. Um, then I'm using a little bit at uh, let's see, I'm cutting out a little bit at like. 380 hertz here. I am boosting about 6 dB at 79 hertz. And then uh, I have a high pass filter or a low pass filter, I'm sorry, to take out the highs right at, you know, like 14K or so. And then I'm using the compression a little bit just to get that like first little blip going off. Uh, and I don't need the gate here because this is Easy Drummer and these are uh, like pre-gated drums. If I were doing this on like my drummer set, I would be using the gate here. And then I'm um, using the JS tape recorder from Toucan. Uh, to get more of that saturation feel. Uh, let's move on. You know what? Let's do a kick before and after all the effects.
much more definition, much more thump, uh, and much more aggressive kick on there. Let's move on to the snare. Now, I've, I've kind of changed philosophies on mixing snares over the time. Uh, I used to do like an SSL uh, with an 1176 compressor, or I would do just like re-EQ with a, a different thing or different styles. I thought for this, I, I like the 1073 EQ with an LA-2A style compressor. So I'm using the Brit channel from Analog Obsessions because there is no 1073 in Toucan John. I know I've talked to you on this. If you can get a hold of a 1073, that would be amazing uh, because I would do use that over this. Uh, uh, this uh, high band is a 12K band. I can't tell what number it is until I move it. So it's like 5.4 dB. I'm using the 7.2 like mid high band uh, at uh, it's like four and a half. Um, I'm doing the 220 hertz low band at a little over three. And then I'm using a high pass filter at 80. Uh, and I'm bumping up the preamp a bit and then pulling back on the um, output. Just kind of tightens it up. Gets The high pass filter is doing a lot. It's getting rid of those low kind of... Um, boxy sounds, uh, and uh, I kind of like the way it works. For compression, I'm doing just the most simple compressor I can find, the LA-2A. I have the, I, th I don't even think I changed the gain. I just dialed in the peak reduction to get from three to five or so dB of gain reduction. If you don't know why I'm doing that, take a look at this video up here. If I'm out of cards, I'll put it in the description. I, I keep saying, take a look at this video up here, and I have no idea what my count is. YouTube only allows five cards because they probably want you to stay on one video uh, or another. Uh, for saturation, because I did want to use saturation and everything, I'm using this barrier plugin. Uh, Brandon from Free Plugin Friday did a video on this a while ago. If I can find that video, I'll put it in the description. Otherwise, I'll put a link to this plugin in the description. Um, this will add distortion, essentially. Uh, and what I did is I left all the defaults the same. Like you could change the GUI to like red or black or whatever. But uh, I just dialed in this dial here, which brings in the saturation. It can do anything from like a real light um, tape-like saturation to full-on distortion. And then finally, I added a re-EQ. I just have one band here at just over 560 hertz of negative 3.3. I just, I didn't like a little frequency in there and I just decided to take it out. So let's do before and after all the effects on the snare. And I'm doing many more effects on this that I'll get into in the send, so don't worry that, that this is not the snare sound that will be the final product. Um, hi-hat was super easy. I basically treated the hi-hat and the overheads the same. In fact, why don't I solo out both of those? I'll just kind of go through what I'm doing here. Uh, I have re-EQ on both. Um, I just did a high-pass filter way up at 400 hertz. I did a little cut here at like 4.6K because I didn't really like what it was sounding like. And then I did a high uh, shelf at 8K. Um, I'm using an SSL native bus compressor again. Uh, this is the version two or number two or second, or I don't know how you ever look at it. I'm getting about 4 dB of gain reduction here. And then I'm also using the neural cue. I used the same preset and just dragged over the effect from the, the drum bus. Um, so here's both of the hi-hat and the overheads alone. Uh, let me do before and after effects off and on. I really like processing overheads this way. Doing that high pass filter at 400 gets rid of all of the low end and low mid like rumble and thump. I know this is for program drums, but if you're doing a real set, you don't want any of those extra frequencies. Like if you hit the tom or you hit the kid or whatever things are, are resonating around. Um, that's the overheads and the uh, hi-hat. I kind of treated those both together. There are two other tracks from Easy Drummer that came in. There's this ambience track. I don't know if you'll be able to hear much on it. And then there's this reverb track. Now I do have a video on how to get huge drums. Again, link up here or in the description depending on how many cards I have uh, using a room mic. Um, this, I thought I was gonna be able to bring this in and use that for that, but it turns out I really didn't need it. Um, it, it, it doesn't bring in as much ambience for the entire kit because they are separately recorded instruments on here. Even though you can hear some bleed in the toms and the, and the snare and things like that in the overheads, I, I didn't really feel like this reverb 
really did it. So I just left it as is. I just kind of dialed it in. I almost forgot the toms. Uh, after the uh, ambience reverb, I think I skipped over because I was in the overheads channel here. Uh, for the toms, uh, I'm using a very simple EQ and compressor in saturation. Uh, I just decided to do a bump here at, uh, it's about 122 hertz, and then a cut at 285, just below that 300 hertz range. Uh, I'm using the NC76B, which is 1176 compressor. Release kind of on the slow side, attack up the middle, and I had to do a lot of output gain to have these stick out. And then JS saturation at 79, because it seemed like a good number at the time. Let's sell it the toms. This is probably the best place to play them. You can hear what they sound like, and I'll do it before and after, and I'll play the whole section so you can hear all three hits here. You can really hear them ring out when I add all the EQ and I, I dial in that frequency where, where each tom was. Now, on a normal set or sometimes an easy drummer, I would split the toms out to their own separate tracks so I get better control over them. I thought they sounded pretty good here. And then I'm compressing them pretty hard. Each hit is hitting over 10, you know, 10 dB gain reduction here. But it gets that like nice, like boomy 80s tom sound that I really like out of there. Uh, let's move on to the sends. We'll start with the parallel compression here. Now, what I'm starting with is the pre-DD uh, preamp. Now, what this is, is this is the preamp section to a Helios Type 9 EQ amplifier. Uh, what that means is it, amp it emulates just the preamp stuff going in with no EQ. There is another uh, plugin. I have that in one of my other videos. I think it was the Wave video that I did uh, early on, if you look at that link uh, early on in the video. Um, this one does just a preamp part of it. I want a little bit of just oomph going into this um, so that I can kind of fine tune it later. I'm then using the SSL native bus compressor with a pretty aggressive setting of a 21, 20 to 1 ratio. Uh, I'm using attack of 10, release of 0.1, and thresholds all the way down, makeup gain is all the way up. I want as much compression as I can get on this, and then I will dial uh, the mix in uh, at, to the actual drums. Uh, I am using re-EQ to do a high pass and a low pass filter. High pass is at 150, low pass is at 6390.5 because that's kind of where I just went to at one point and I use, just copy and paste these to different projects. Uh, and then I have relimit for a brick wall limiter just to make sure I'm not clipping and to kind of just further compress those. Uh, I'm not gonna do it before and after. I'm sending the uh, kick, the snare, and the toms to this. I'll play you what this sounds like. Uh, maybe I, well, let's do the, ki the whole kit before and after the uh, parallel compression. You can see what it's adding. It's adding a lot. If you're listening with good headphones or studio monitors, which you should be to all mixing videos. Do not listen to mixing videos on your phone or your laptop. They will not get you anything of use. Maybe hotkeys and things like that, but nothing sound-wise. Uh, it's distorting a little bit. You'll notice that, and I did that on purpose. I pushed the uh, both the preamp and the limiter to kind of get some distortion and get some saturation in there because I like that, you know, dirties up the drum sounds. From here on, I'm gonna leave the uh, parallel compression on when I go through all the rest of these sends. They kind of build on each other, and that's why I have them in this order from left to right. Uh, next is the Drums Exciter. This is adding EQ without adding EQ. What does that mean? It's adding harmonic frequencies without adding actual EQ. I don't wanna get into the science of this because I don't really understand it. Um, Brandon over at the Noise Floor AV, also Free Plugin Friday, also Mix Minute has a lot of good videos on this. Uh, take a look at his um, channel and uh, if I have any more links, I'll put them somewhere. Um, what I'm using for this is I'm using the uh, Toucan Exciter with Fat Bottom. I have turned off the Fat Bottom part because this is an exciter for the highs. What I'm doing here, I'm putting like the uh, snare and I put the overheads and, and uh, the hi-hat into this to get more of those harmonic frequencies out. 
And then I just have a, a EQ to kind of take out the low and highs right around 150 again, or right around like 9K. And then a limiter just to brick wall that I'm not actually pushing the limiter down at all. I just leave the brick wall at 0.1 in case anything happens to go over, which it shouldn't. Um, but it's a kind of a good practice for making sure that nothing you know gets out of place that you miss. Here's what the exciter sounds like just by itself. just taking those kind of highs and, and emphasizing them in the mix. And then let's do a before and after the mix with, or, or just the drums, I should say, uh, with the uh, exciter off and then on. Now it is adding a little bit of volume. Um, what I usually do is I try to volume match these the best I can with the exception of the uh, parallel compression. And then I'll just bring the fader in, uh, start it at, you know, all the way zero and just kind of play the mix and bring the fader in to get what it sounds like. So there may be a little bit of different in the, in volume uh, on a whole, but what it's really doing is bringing in those harmonic frequencies. Uh, let's take a look at the next channel. It's the clipper. Uh, and what this is, is this is actually clipping or distorting the drums. I send the, uh, kick and the snare to this every once in a while i will send the toms but i think that i like the toms ringing out the way they are so for this uh let me just verify that i'm not lying to you yes i do not add the toms uh to this uh let's take a look at the plugins i'm using this barrier plugin again but i'm using a more aggressive uh, almost distorted in fact let's just solo out what this sounds like here Doing, and this is gonna sound weird because you would think you'd want heavier music to be more distorted and everything. Uh, in the funk stuff I'm doing, I actually use this more aggressively than I do in this hard rock or metal. I'll just call it metal, forgive me if it's not truly metal. There's bodies hitting the floor and, and goalies kicking the ball or not or whatever, it sounds metal to me. Um, the, I, in this, I wanted more definition coming out of the kick and snare, so I dialed it back. But uh, let me just make sure I see where I am here. You can really kill this thing. I'll just crank this all the way up to 11 because why wouldn't it have a number to 11? Now, you can take that, as nasty as that sounds alone, mix it in with a regular kit, and you're not going to hear that, like, farty, distorted, trash canny thing going on. It'll actually emphasize your drums pretty, pretty nicely. Uh, I like to do that with, like, the funk stuff we're doing, especially if I'm doing, like, a precision bass along with it, both of those together, and I kind of get really gritty and kind of really uh, aggressive sounding. Um, the only other thing I'm doing on this is a relimit. Uh, i putting both at negative six to kind of just get it in range here. I'll play the kit with and without the clipper track. Again, it's adding a little bit of volume because we're really just sending tracks to this thing and then and affecting with plugins. Uh, but I do like the, how it adds just some more definition, a little bit of uh, attack on the kick maybe just a little bit of like snap on the snare. It's it's a pretty subtle effect. And with this, I'll leave the fader all the way at zero and just kind of dial it in until it sounds good to my ears. Uh, moving on here, we have the max bass track. This is specifically for the kick drum. I was using Waves R bass, which is a really actually good plugin. Sorry, Waves, you ruined me. Um, what I'm using is this Love End from Analog Obsession is this free plugin. Again, uh, let me solo this out. This is just going to emphasize some of the low end frequencies. I have the frequency set at 60 here all the way down and I boost it up until it kind of sounds good. I'm looking for that extra like wah, wah, wah on the, on the kick drum. I'm also using Relimit here again uh, as a, a brick wall just to kind of pull it in. So this is what it sounds like just by itself. It's adding that that thump, that low end thump that sometimes you can't get with EQ. Uh, a lot of people don't record with like a sub kick mic. This is kind of emulating the sub kick mic. I did a video a long time ago on three ways to add sub kick. This one of them was R bass. This is another one. Um, let's do before and after. Listen specifically to the kick on this.
you can definitely tell that there's adding that thump. Again, if you, if you just listen to that on a phone, I don't know what to say. You don't have a speaker that can even replicate that. Uh, if you're listening to a good headphones, earbuds, or studio monitors, then uh, you, you definitely heard what was going on there. So drum punch is essentially just taking those frequencies for the kick and the snare and just aggressively punching them. Maybe. Uh, kind of emphasizing. Um, what I did is I used the JS transient controller. I put the attack all the way up to 100%. What I want that to do is it takes the transient and just kind of stretches it out this way. If you do a before and after, if you render one of these with this plugin, you can see how it it just kind of makes the transient louder. It doesn't make, it makes the track louder. But what we're trying to do is make the transient, the first hit louder. Uh, and then I have our EQ at, uh, I have one at 80 for that like kick uh, area. And then I have one at 1K for that like snare pop, like snap area. And then I just put a limiter on with a brick wall ceiling negative three, just so I don't overdo it. Um, this track alone sounds like this. Very, very, very subtle. You'll have to probably turn, I'll, I'll turn that up and post so, so you can hear it, but I don't want to overdo it. All it's doing is adding a little bit of thump and a little bit of just like, like snap on it. Uh, not overdoing it. I don't know if you'll be able to even hear the difference in the drum mix here, but we'll try it. You probably didn't hear it. It's, uh, it's, probably pretty hard to hear that, but adding all these little things up, uh, as I talked about in my compression video I mentioned earlier, you add hundreds and hundreds of tiny mix moves to make one big mix. Could I take this out by itself? Sure, probably. Uh, is it useful though? Yes, definitely. Uh, and it all depends on the style of music and if you want just that extra little snap on your snare or extra little thump on your kick. Uh, next one is the first, uh, the next thing with a paid plugin. I apologize for this. Uh, I'm using the SSL native flex verb and regate to create a gated verb. Uh, let's play one of these things with the toms in there. I send the, um, sometimes the kick, I'm doing it in this, uh, and the snare and the toms to this. I just want an extra little oomph. Probably really hard to hear. Again, this is one of those where I could take it out. You may not notice, but all these things added on to each other kind of make the sound. It is a reverb on it, and then the gate just kind of cuts it off right afterwards. Um, I wanted to do this kind of like an 80s trick with the, you know, the big drums in the 80s, you know, Phil Collins, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, not really doing it overboard. As you can tell, it's barely on. Uh, but I just wanted some extra oomph and extra verb in there. Um, I'm using the SSL native verb on a setting that I came up with. And if I ever lose, I won't know how to recreate it. And then I have just a regate setting um, with real quick attack, no hold, a fairly quick release at 30 milliseconds and um, a pre-open at three milliseconds. I, I'm just, I'm really just pulling it in and snapping it off right away. Uh, I will, uh, why don't we do the next verb first? I'll play both verbs before and after. This next one is called Drum Plate. I really only use it for the snare track. It is my snare reverb. Now, sometimes I will use a different reverb on the drum bus itself. In fact, I have a, a short reverb that I use on all my instrument buses. I'll get into that in another video, and I've already talked about that in other videos. I won't cover that here. But on the on the snare drum itself, I want a separate like drum reverb to get the snare to pop out. Uh, let's listen to that right now. It's gonna be pretty low in the mix. It's your standard snare uh, reverb. Um, I've added, I have a medium plate here. I added some settings in here that I thought sounded good. A little bit of compression, which is kind of a cool feature of this. Uh, you can compress the reverb itself. Um, and then I just put re-EQ after it and I cut out the lows and the, and the extreme highs. Uh, I don't want any like low end rumble coming out of the reverb going into that track. Let's play this with both reverbs off and then on. And then I will, uh, I'll go back and forth.
again, you probably can't really tell the difference. If you have really good headphones, you probably will. If you turn it way up, you really will. Uh, but I use that just to kind of emphasize it. With more of a metal track, I don't want as much reverb on the drums as I would in like some of my funk stuff. Uh, and I've done stuff with like really what I call like a cavernous reverb on the drums where the, you, know, you hit the kick and you can like hear it, you know, 200 yards away or whatever. Um, but I didn't want to really do that here. That is all the processing that I do on my drums. Uh, and then what I do for each of the sends, uh, I'll send the kick to almost all of the sends except for the drum plate. Uh, I'll send it to the punch. I'll send it to the gated verb. I'll send it to the max bass, the clipper, and the P drums. The snare, I'll send to everything. The uh, overheads or the hi-hat for this, I send just to the exciter. Every once in a while, I might send it to a reverb, but usually I handle the reverb with the uh, on the drum bus itself. And then the toms, I will send to the parallel compression and the exciter and the gated verb. So let's do before and after all of the processing within the, uh, the context of the mix. And I warn you, the drums are really, really, really quiet until all the effects are added. Best practice in mixing, say you want to volume match as much as possible, but when you're layering as many of these kind of effects or sends or aux tracks or whatever you want to call them, you really are adding a lot of volume because each each one is a send of the entire drum that you're sending to it. Um, but you could just see the impact that this uh, adds. We'll do before and after in this last chorus section we've we'll been listening to here. So there it is. That is my drum processing for Easy Drummer for heavy drums. Uh, I have done a couple other videos where I've used Easy Drummer and I've kind of gone through how I've mixed them. I haven't really gone through how I mix heavier drums. There is, I'm, I'm, I want more focus. I want less reverb. I want less echoes. I want less like the cavernous kicks and things like that. Uh, I probably want a little bit more cymbals uh, than I would normally want because I don't want, I want they kind of have to wash and crash over everything else is going on with your heavy guitars and your heavy bass and things like that and aggressive vocals. Um, but that's really how I do it. Uh, what do you think? Do you use Easy Drummer? I know you got a lot of you guys will use either Slate or Get Good Drums. Uh, I do know there's a lot of people out there using Easy Drummer. You should be able to use the same kind of techniques for mixing each of these drums on uh, any one of the programs that you use because you're just you bring MIDI in and you're processing a channel. Uh, you're going to want to take some of my settings and adjust them to your own sound and your own you know style and your kit that you're using. Uh, but for the most part, this should get you going uh, in a pretty decent direction. So uh, let me know what you think. Again, thank you. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Leave me a comment down below. Uh, I'm looking for, I don't know what I'm going to do next year for my goals and things like that. I'll probably figure that out at some point. I may not make them public. I may. Uh, we'll see. But until next time, uh, have yourselves an amazing New Year. That is not what it sounds like. That is what the drums sound like. Here's what it sounds like. I should know what I'm doing before I do this. You don't want any of that leftover hum or any of that re re you know, reverb, reverb, reverberation, resonation. Resonation is the word. That's the word. I don't want to say room mic because it's not really a room mic. It's more just like extra mics in the room.